let's start to get into the first uh, nuts and bolts, if you will, the first actual techniques that you guys are going to be learning to set up your front headlock. And that's going to be reactive entries. There are going to be proactive entries that we're going to learn later, and there are reactive entries. In a proactive entry, you're taking the initiative. You're physically grabbing your opponent by the head, and you are off balance them, and you are pulling their head down, pulling it lower than your armpit. Again, once the head is lower than your armpit, that's all you need, the entry's there. That's a proactive entry. We do it ourselves, we're proactive about it. All right, those are a little more tricky because you have to do some work. There's also reactive entries. There are things your opponent will do that will actually put their head lower than your armpit for you. They do the hard work for you and you just need to know how to counter and go into the front headlock position. That tends to be a little bit easier because they put the head below your armpit for you. We're gonna talk about those elements this week. We're gonna talk about sprawling, down blocking, and countering your opponent's underhook escape, okay? So let's get into our sprawls. So from back here, let's say Graydon Goat wants to go into a double leg takedown. He takes his right knee to the middle, he's through, grabs my legs, tackles me to the floor. Excellent. But you'll notice that when Graydon attacked a double leg takedown, he took his head lower than my armpit and is leading me opportunities for a front headlock. So how do we capitalize back up? The first thing I want to do is I want to present a bladed body to my partner. If I'm standing square to Graydon and he goes into a double leg takedown, it's just so easy for him. I have no base of support in the backward direction. So when I see somebody coming in for a double leg takedown, my first thing is to blade my body so that I have a base of support behind me. If I'm here, I have no base of support, I go back very easy. So I blade my body, I push my hip into green. We're here, boom, step number one, blading. Step number two, I'm putting my shoelaces to the floor. If I stand the balls on my feet, and he drives forward, he stands me right up, and he gets underneath of me. So when he comes in, I blade my body, and then I put my shoelaces to the floor. Now as he drives into me, I can slide back, and I can maintain my base. So we want our shoelaces to the floor. Another thing that I do is I try to drop my knee. So when I put my shoelaces to the floor, I try to go up with my foot, and I try to drop right to my knee. He comes in, just like so. Okay. One more important element of the sprawl, very important. I like to push the head down. If Graydon can maintain good posture, straight back, head and neck in good position, he has some strength and power to him. Even with my sprawl, he fights through this, he still might be able to get, drive up and through. So as Graydon goes in, I sprawl, shoelaces down, and I'll come here and I'll start to push the head down, either with my elbow, I'll use the elbow here, or sometimes I'll use the hand. But now when the elbow's in, if I ask Graydon to drive into me now, I'm taking up. It's very hard. It's very hard for me to drive through if I can fold his neck. If he can keep that neck in a good position, he's strong. If I can force his chin to tuck his chest, he gets very weak. So he shoots in, I play it. I put my shoelaces on the floor. I apply downward pressure on the head. Just like so. Let's back up. Now, from here, if he continues to drive into me, I can thumb post. Let's say you grab my legs. Yes, yes. He's grabbing my legs. He's trying to drive into me. I thumb post on the knees, and I push myself away from the knees. So when he tries to drive forward, he can't go any more forward. I block the knees from coming forward. And now from here, it becomes so easy for me to set my three points of control. I get a chin strap, I get my good shoulder position, I get the elbow control, and my left knee comes off the floor. Now when Greg goes to angle to my back, we're moving, we're moving, and we end up right here. One more time, scroll off the double. I'm right here, blading, sprawling back, shoelaces down, getting my shoulder in front of this down at the base of the neck so, I, so he, he can't drive in underneath of me. And I set my three points of control. 
And then from here, with the three points of control, it's time to create an immediate submission threat and then decide if we want to go after the submission or if we want to advance our position. And that's sprawling versus a double leg. Now, another shot your opponent might take at you is a single leg. Now, in a double leg, your opponent's head goes to the outside. So it tends to be pretty easy to stuff and get that front headlock. But in a single leg, your opponent's head's to the inside. If I try to wrap a guillotine here, it's just not the same. Okay? If his head's to the outside, double leg, I can actually just start wrapping the guillotine and I can start putting the submission down right from here, even without sprawling. And, and in reality, I can start jumping guard and putting the finish on. That's when the head's on the outside. But when the head's on the inside for a single leg, it just doesn't work the same. If I try to pull guard now, he's going to end up past my guard and it's going to deteriorate very fast. Same thing, I don't want to present a square body to him. If, he, if I have a square body, he shoots into a single leg and he can take me right back for a time to be very out of balance. So again, we're going to blade our body. He goes in, shoots, blade the body. I put one leg back, I drive one hip forward. Another important thing that I do is I put a wizard on. If I don't, if I put this right here, he goes to my back, and now he's in a rear clinch. That's no good. So he goes to shoot in. I blade my body, and I put my whiz around right here, my right arm. Let's rotate this way a little bit. My forearm right here. Now when he tries to go to take my back, my forearm's in his way. He goes to go to a rear clinch. My whiz will keep me in front of him. So we're here. Now another thing that I want to do, just like I did with the double leg, is I want to take my shoelaces down to the floor, trying to drive my knee down to the mat. Another thing that I do, very similar to the double leg, is I push the head down here. Now as I push the head down, he tries to lift my leg up and tries to drive forward. It's very difficult for him to do anything once that posture is broken. Again, the idea is I take the chin and I force his chin to touch his own chest. So right here, he shoots that single. I blade, I put my whizzer in with my right arm already right here. I'm already putting my shoelaces down, trying to drive my knee down to the mat. And the last thing I do is I take my elbow or my hand and I start pushing his head down. And as I push his head down, I want to cover it with my body. So when we go down, I square my body up over his head. Now when he tries to look up, my body is in his way. From here, if he continues to try to drive forward, I bump close down the knees, keeping him away, just like so. And now once again, I set my chin strap, I set my shoulder position, and I set my elbow control. We can use closed wedges, or I'm sorry, open wedges here, or we could come in, we could start setting closed wedges. Okay? Going into our submission. So that's the single leg. It's very similar to a double leg. We still blade the body, we still sprawl with our shoelaces, and we still try to shove the head down. Okay? The difference is on a, wizard, on a single leg, we're worried about our opponent going to our back, so we put that wizard on. Okay? Another way that we might get this is with something called a down block. What's a down block? So it doesn't matter if he goes a single leg or double leg. Let's do double, double be easier. When he goes double leg like so, okay, if he gets in this deep, we're working our sprawl. But sometimes I can beat him to the punch. If we're here in a good wrestling stance, I don't want to reach with both my arms too early or at the same time. And I don't want to get too aggressive re reaching with my lead arm. If he just pops my arm up, the legs are open. So I, if you want to be very careful to not get taken down. It's usually a good general rule of thumb to keep your lead arm protecting your lead leg. Okay? If I start keeping this leg down and I reach here, this front leg is unprotected. That's the one he's probably going to grab. So if I'm going to reach and mess with the head, a lot of wrestlers would prefer to do it with the rear arm so that this arm stays here to defend the leg. If you were to shoot a single leg or double leg now, I can down block. Now a down block is where I take my leg away and I put my hand in front of the leg. So if he tries to get to the leg, he runs into my arm. 
Ideally, when you down block, you want your elbow to be close to your body so your palm is going to face away. Notice when my palm faces toward myself. Notice how my elbow naturally flares away from the body. So again, if we want to convey strength and power to our opponent and put downward pressure on the head of the elbows, we're going to put palms facing away when our opponent shoots. So here, Crane's going to make a concerted effort, or you know, he's going to make an actual attempt to get in. He's not just going to walk in with the head low and grab. But he's going to take a shot. I'm here, and I put my, my hand down just like so. Okay. Now he could get to the leg. Now I come up and over the head. I get my chin strap, I get my shoulder position, and I get the elbow control. One more time, I'm here my right arm is defending my lead leg. He goes to shoot. Again, I just put my hand right down to the floor in front of his shoulder. So my arm blocks him out. When he tries to drive through to my leg, he ends up running into an underhook. Now he ends up uh, driving in, driving in, driving in, and up back up here. And he doesn't get to the leg. So we pummel in. It's basically pummeling in an underhook, but I do so by just taking my hand straight down to the floor and taking my leg back and away. One more time, we're here. My, my arm goes down now. I come back up over the head. I establish my three points of control, and we're ready to go. One more reactive entry. Uh, you know, I'll show two more. Uh, from the ground. So these are all from the standing position, and that's certainly one way you get to the, the front headlock. But it works just as well from the ground. If I have, if I have top side control in Graydon, one way that Graydon will want to get out of here is he can dig an underhook. And he can use that underhook to start to turn to his knees. He can start to rest. Perfect. Now, almost in an underhook. This is, and he starts coming up on a leg. Now this is just like defending our single leg. Again, if I'm lazy with my right arm position, where's Graydon gonna go? He's gonna go there, or he's gonna slip his head, and he's gonna behind me, right? Because he was attacking a, a, a single leg, and I didn't wizard. So when I got an opponent, pump, pummels in an underhook, and they start fighting up to their side, I put my right arm right here in front of the hip. I'm gonna start to sprawl my legs back in a way. He's probably gonna connect hands here. I'm going to start to push his head down, just like we, when we defended the single leg. I push the head down and I cover his head with my own chest, sprawling my legs back and away. If he continues to drive into me, I thump post on the knees so he can't get in. And then I find my chin strap, I find my shoulder position, I find the elbow control, and my knees off the floor. And now we're ready to go. My elbows pull back to convey strength to my opponent. My elbows loosen up to get to good choking positions. And then my elbows pull back again to get the finish. So he can turn up on an underhook escape and turn up into a single leg. And from there, it's just kind of the same elements of the single leg sprawl. Wizard, a bladed body with shoelaces on the floor pushing the head down and covering the head with the belly, pushing away on the knees, and then we go to our front headlock. Another thing that might happen is your opponent might shoot in from guard. If I'm here playing guard and he windshield wipers kind of feet to one side and starts to shoot in, again, I can sprawl back and away using a down block, pushing down on the head, and I get my points of control. So there's a number of different opportunities you'll have. When your opponent gets aggressive and they fight forward trying to grab onto your legs and they bring their head lower than your armpit, you have a free opportunity at cinching up front headlock control. From that front headlock control, there's a lot of great attacks. We saw that it's a multiple dilemma based system. If the neck is open, go guillotine. If they hand fight, you're gonna have an opportunity to go behind them and get a better position. If they post on the hips, we have arm triangles and submissions there. If they start to stand up, we can advance our position by grabbing that uh, cradle control right 
connect his head to his leg together. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of great uh, opportunities. One more that we didn't talk about that's just as important. Uh, we're going to talk about this more when we talk about guillotines, but I'll, I'll put it in here uh, just as a quick bonus. Kneeling front headlock. If I come in and I commit to my gui I commit to my guillotine, and I'm trying to finish, and for whatever reason it's not working, we can also we can still use the front headlock to advance positionally. I make sure he doesn't pass guard, and I can start to put in butterfly hooks. I can start to crunch his chin to his chest. Rolling onto his back, and I can come up and I can use hook sweeps combined with the chin strap control, combined with my guillotine attempt to advance my position. And hook sweeps are another great example of how the front headlock goes in, in the submission route on one hand, and if you can't get the submission, we can advance positionally with go behinds, cradles, and as you guys just saw hook sweeps as well. Again, the front headlock control, remember, the front headlock control is not strong and robust. You will not hold this position for 45 seconds or a minute at a time the way you will mount or back control. But it's every bit as effective. You just gotta learn the system well and then start to get proficient with it. And you're gonna have to make those split second decisions. Am I gonna go in the route of submission? Or am I gonna go in the route of positional advancement? And that'll be up to you and your training partner's defensive responses.